Please adhere to YouTube's selected guidelines before viewing content of this video. I do not encourage or condone any products, actions, or behaviors shown in this video. All videos are produced in a safe, professional, and controlled environment. Please do not attempt to replicate any actions performed during the video. All actions are performed by professionals. Alrighty, so today I'm going to be smoking and reviewing the 24-7 menthol cigarettes, which I will admit I'm not really expecting great things from. I've previously tried a different variety of 24-7s before, and I found them to be pretty low quality, and I found them to be pretty kind of icky tasting and just not to my preference as a whole. And so as such, I'm not really expecting any different from these cigarettes right here. While I might not be expecting any different from these cigarettes right here though, I certainly do hope that I get something different. I hope that these are good cigarettes, but I'm not really expecting them to be, frankly put. But what is 24-7 as a brand? Well, 24-7 is a budget cigarette brand that was first introduced by Tantus Tobacco, which was a budget cigarette-focused cigarette manufacturer from Kentucky. These days, 24-7s are produced by Excalibur International, which is, once again, a budget cigarette-focused cigarette manufacturer that is not based in Kentucky, though, instead being based in Oklahoma, I want to say. The reason why these are now made by Excalibur and not Tantus is because Tantus was actually purchased by Excalibur in 2016. And after the purchase, Excalibur decided to continue producing all of the legacy brands that Tantus had been making since before 2007. The reason why I say 2007 in specific is because around the time of the purchase of Tantus, Excalibur um, was very aware of what the FDA was doing. And at that time, the FDA had been trying to introduce some more cigarette regulation that would regulate cigarettes that were introduced after 2007 a little bit harsher than cigarettes introduced before 2007. And so to just avoid any FDA paperwork or anything like that kind of thing, Excalibur just said, all right, we're only going to continue producing cigarette brands made by Tantus that were introduced before 2007. And so that's exactly what they did. And so as such, I know that 24-7s must have been introduced before 2007, but I don't know when the brand was first introduced. I don't know an exact date. I don't know an exact year. I really do have no clue when this brand was first introduced, except for the fact that I know that it was introduced prior to 2007. However, based off the packaging, I would have to guess that these were probably introduced in the early 2000s. I'm thinking like 2002, 2003, 2004, something like that kind of thing. Because the packaging, it looks pretty digital. It looks not like it was done by hand or anything like that kind of thing. It looks like, I'll be frank, the Windows Vista of cigarette packaging. And I don't say that as a good thing kind of thing. The Windows Vista of cigarette packaging. Windows Vista sucks. I hate Windows Vista. This packaging, I don't like it kind of thing. But it looks very early 2000s, I will admit. Which is why I think that this brand was probably first introduced in the early 2000s. But I have no proof to back that up. Overall, though, as I'm sure you guys can tell, I'm not really expecting a super great smoke from the 24-7 menthols. But nonetheless, I am looking forward to trying them, and I'm looking forward to letting you guys know whether they're good or whether they're bad. And if they are bad, I certainly am looking forward to hating on them just a little bit, that is for sure. But before I go ahead and hop into my expectations for, well, this pack of cigarettes right here, I want to go ahead and first off give a huge shout out to Fred Scott for sending this pack of cigarettes over to my P.O. Box for me to make some content about. Thank you so much to Fred Scott for sending this pack of cigarettes over. I really, really, really do appreciate it. But what are my specific expectations for, well, the 24-7 menthol cigarettes? Well, taste-wise, I am expecting a pretty basic, um, more overwhelming than not, sweeter than not menthol taste with a little bit of sourness in there, but really not much kind of thing. I'm expecting the menthol taste to be more overwhelming than not, as said, but not completely so. I am expecting to taste a little bit of the tobacco as well. And so as such, I am also expecting to taste a little bit of an additive taste and a little bit of a chemical taste kind of thing, and maybe a little bit of a low quality paper taste as well. I'm not really expecting the greatest taste in the world, but hopefully the menthol does a good job of covering up just how low quality I am expecting these cigarettes to be. 
I'd have to say body wise, I'm expecting an all right size body, but I'm not expecting like a super big body by any means because I am indeed expecting a decently large line of perforation on the filter of well, these cigarettes right here. And I would have to say uh, airflow wise, I am expecting the airflow to be perfectly fine. I'm not expecting it to be particularly constricted nor particularly wide open. I will not. I'm expecting it to just be perfectly fine. You know what I'm saying? I'm expecting the draw to be a little bit heavier than not due to the perforation on the filter. And I'm also expecting to be a little bit airy if I do say so myself. And I am expecting the roughness and smoothness of these cigarettes right here uh, to be, well, uh, smoother than not. I'm expecting these cigarettes to be smoother than not. Around about a five out of 10 with 10 being the roughest and one being the smoothest. So pretty much just right in the middle. I'm not expecting a super smooth cigarette nor a super rough cigarette by any means. Those are pretty much my expectations for, well, the 24-7 menthol cigarettes. And so as such, without further ado, it is now time for me to go ahead and hop right into the packaging of, well, this pack of cigarettes right here. After I go over the packaging now, I'm gonna go ahead and get the cellophane all off. I'm gonna go ahead and get the pack of cigarettes all opened up. I'm gonna go ahead and get one of the cigarettes out and let you guys know what the 24-7 cigarettes, uh, what the 24-7 menthol cigarettes look like, what they feel like, and what the quality of them is like. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and get one of the 24-7 menthol cigarettes all lit up. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know what I actually think about them. And then after after that, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys my final thoughts and I'm gonna go ahead and give these cigarettes right here a rating. But first off, as said, we gotta go ahead and cover the packaging of, well, this pack of cigarettes right here, which I am not a particularly big fan of. It comes off as a very cheap budget cigarette, which I figure was probably the point. To me, at least, in my personal opinion, budget cigarettes tend to look cheap by design. And I think the exact same thing is going on with this pack right here. It looks cheap, but I think that's by design. And so as such, I think they have achieved their goal. These look pretty cheap if I do say so myself. And so as such, I think they've achieved their goal. They want it to be known just by looking at the packaging that these are a budget cigarette. And I think they've achieved their goal kind of thing. But that doesn't mean I'm a fan of the packaging by any means kind of thing. The best thing about this packaging is the 24-7 name because I'm like 24-7, ah, it's a pretty funny name kind of thing. I'm like, you're smoking 24-7 you're smoking cigarettes, 24-7. It's, it's, it's a pretty funny name kind of thing. I really like the name and I don't mind the logo either, but the rest of the packaging, I'll be frank, y'all, I hate, I do not like this packaging. It is some of the ugliest packaging in my personal opinion. It is not interesting. It's boring. There's no good details to it kind of thing from a distance. How does it look kind of thing? It looks mildly distinct. It's got the green border with the blue and white on the inside kind of thing. You can see 24-7 right there. It's mildly distinct from a distance, but not like super distinct by any means kind of thing. If you know what you're looking for, you're probably going to be able to find it on the shelf, but... It's not super distinct by any means kind of thing. It looks cheap from a distance and it looks cheap up close and I'm really not a big fan of it. But nonetheless, I am gonna go ahead and go over all of the details on this packaging. I do suppose starting off with the logo itself, the 24-7 logo itself. And we could just see it just says 24 dash, or not dash, that's not a dash, that's a slash right there, a forward slash, that's a forward slash or a backslash. It's a forward slash. Is that a backslash? I don't know what the difference is in all honesty. Is this slash right there? I do suppose I should probably know what the difference is between a forward slash and a backslash in all honesty, but I don't. I know they go different directions. I just don't know which one is which, to be honest. Um, but after the slash, it just says seven right there. And then we get a little bit of a copyright symbol right there. Uh, we can see the 24-7 logo as a whole, though, is a little bit more interesting than not. It looks almost, uh, they tried to make it look almost like three-dimensional kind of thing. It tries to come off like it looks like a sign, I feel like at least, and I like what they did with it. Um, it has uh, a very nice highlights on it kind of thing. We can see on the two right here, there are some like bright areas going along the upper edges of the um, number right here and everything like that kind of thing. And those are some highlights. And then we can see there's also some shading on the letter itself and then below all of the uh, numbers there's also a very 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 light drop shadow which fades out uh, of existence very quickly kind of thing we can see the drop shadow very 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 distinctly on this slash right here and then as said once again there is a copyright symbol right there as well and that's pretty much all there is to the logo it's not embossed or anything like that kind of thing it would be nice if it was embossed but it's not it's a budget cigarette so what can I really say kind of thing. I'm not really too surprised, but it would be nice if it was embossed, I will admit. But you know, it just says 24-7 right there. The logo of 24-7s, definitely a little bit more interesting than not. And it really is, in my personal opinion, the best thing about this packaging. And now that I've covered what I like about this packaging, uh, let's go ahead and just start covering um, everything I don't like, which is pretty much the, the rest of the packaging, I will admit. Um, we can see under the 24-7 logo right here, which looks pretty good if I do say so myself. I like the 24-7 logo. Could be better, in my personal opinion, but it's not a terrible look by any means. Not a terrible look by any means. So I like it more than not. 
under the 24-7 logo right here, though, we can see there is a green line right there in the same color as the 24-7 right there. And then in black, it just says menthol right there. And then there's another green line. And then it just says under that in black, King Box right there. These are the 24-7 menthol kings. I assume they also make a 100 size as well. So it makes sense why they would specify King Box. If it didn't say King Box, I assume it would say Hundreds Box or something like that kind of thing. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the... Uh, to the, to the design right here besides the background and everything like that kind of thing. Um, before I go ahead and move on to the background though, let's just go ahead and talk about the border that wraps all the way around the background. There is a uh, I'd have to say, um, pretty nice looking, well, nice looking, uh, it's it's a nice looking green, let me just put it that way, it's not really nice looking, it's just a nice looking green. There's a nice looking green border going around uh, the design in the center right here, which is the background that all of this stuff is on. On the bottom of that border, it just says 20 Class A cigarettes right there in white. This is a budget pack of cigarettes. I'm not surprised at all that they try to say, hey, yo, this is a Class A cigarette right here kind of thing, right on the front of the packaging, because um, that seems to be a thing that budget cigarettes tend to do. Um, don't be fooled though. Class A cigarettes don't mean that the cigarettes are any higher quality or anything like that kind of thing. It's just a tax designation within the United States. But Class A makes it sound like it's higher quality, I feel like at least, which I feel like is why budget cigarettes tend to put it on the front of the packaging. But uh, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just a tax designation. There, there is no other used tax designation in the United States. There, others exist. There's, there's Class B. There's a Class B designation. But no cigarettes are made in that designation anymore. The last one was made in the 1990s. And so uh, Class A cigarettes are pretty much the only cigarettes to exist within the United States uh, these days. And, um, but, they, but, but they put it on the front of the packaging anyway because it, it makes it sound more fancy, I feel like, at least. Uh, which is pretty amusing because it's just the exact same classification as literally every other cigarette sold inside the United States. Uh, moving on from the border going around though, we can see at the very top, it's like a very light blue kind of thing. It's like a very light uh, blue border and it's like a little bit darker over here, gets a little bit lighter over here kind of thing. And then moving down, we can just see that same color change is pretty much consistent all the way down up until this point where we have a distinctly different line and it's blue gets lighter all the way over here. And then there's another distinct line right there and that's just like a white line that kind of fades out just like that. And then it goes green to blue to light blue right there. And then once again, green to blue to light blue again and then once again green to blue to just blue kind of thing and then it goes and then there's another white line right here and then a distinctly white thick light white line right here and then it goes to a uh, green and then another white line and then a little white dot right there and then just to the green border right there it looks like they tried to fade it into the green border but they didn't really succeed in all honesty and this background really just screams early 2000s graphic design to me and I'm not talking about good early 2000s graphic design. I'm not talking about, oh, Y2K aesthetic. This is not early 2000s Y2K aesthetic. I don't like it. I do not like how this cigarette pack looks. It does not look particularly retro. It does not look particularly vintage. Well, actually, it does look kind of retro, I guess, if you consider the early 2000s retro. But it, it, it looks dated. It looks dated, let me put it that way. It looks very dated. And it looks like it comes from the early 2000s and not in a good way kind of thing. But also, at the same time, because it does, it did come from the early 2000s, it kind of has a charm to it kind of thing. It does kind of have a charm to it. I still don't like this packaging though. Now that I'm thinking about it, it does, have, it does kind of have an early 2000s charm to it where it's kind of like, haha, yeah, it's like the ugly 2000s look kind of thing. The ugly early 2000s graphic design look. It's kind of funny. I still don't like how this packaging looks. It's, it's ugly, but okay, I guess it kind of has a charm to it. I guess it kind of does. I found one more thing I kind of like about this packaging. It does it does kind of have that ugly early 2000s graphic design charm to it. I get it. I get it. But I don't like this packaging. I still don't. But it does kind of have a charm to it. But that's pretty much all there is to the front of the packaging. As I'm sure you guys can tell, I'm not really a fan. It's all right in distinctness from a distance kind of thing. It's all right. It's not super distinct from a distance by any means. More distinct than not for sure. But not super distinct from a distance. Um... Up close, there's not really any interesting details going on or anything like that. Just tells you the information you need to know on the front of the pack, which I do respect. It looks cheap, and this is a cheap cigarette, and so I think they achieved their goal of making it look cheap, and that's pretty much all I have to say about the front of the packaging. Moving on to the back of the packaging, we can see it is uh, pretty much the exact same as the front of the packaging. The 24-7 logo itself is just brought down just a little bit to avoid it hitting this uh, fold back line right here, and so these... Uh, these uh, this right here and this right here are just a little bit closer together. But other than that, it is the exact same packaging. The background on the top is also a little bit bigger. Uh, and the background on the bottom is also a little bit smaller. But other than that, 
it's pretty much just the exact same design on the back of the packaging as it is on the front of the packaging. So now, without further ado, let's go ahead and move on to this side of the packaging right here. And technically speaking, I do suppose that the design of 24 7 does indeed wrap around the packaging kind of thing, which is something I appreciate, but it does it in the most boring way possible, which is why having a which is by having a border going around the main design on the front of the packaging and the back of the packaging, and then that border just is the main color on the side of the packaging. It, it wraps around in the most boring way possible possible but i gotta give it some credit it does wrap around which is something i do appreciate i like designs that wrap around that is for sure um we can just see there's nothing going on right here it's just a basic green background kind of thing but then moving on below that we can just see it just says 24 7 right there in the exact same logo that we see on the front of the packaging just smaller and in white instead of being in green still has that drop shadow and everything like that kind of thing uh, though I want to say still has that shading uh, no highlights though it's like a little bit of a simplified version of the uh, logo on the front I do suppose as it is smaller it makes sense under that though there is a white line and then it just says menthol and then there's another white line and then it just says uh, Excalib manufactured by uh, Excalibur International LTD which is pretty amusing to me it says Excalibur International from what I can tell though Excalibur I don't think sells any cigarettes internationally I could be wrong I could be wrong I don't think they do though don't think they do could be wrong though and then it says their address after that it says one tobacco road i respect that they got an entire road named one tobacco road i like that i like that uh prior oklahoma uh 74361 made in usa and i'd hope these are made in the usa because uh, excalibur international is headquartered in oklahoma if they weren't made in the usa then It'd be a little bit odd, that is for sure. I wouldn't be disappointed if they weren't made in the USA. It would be interesting. That would be another interesting thing about these cigarettes. But uh, it does make sense that they're made in the USA. Under that, we just get the barcode. At the top of the barcode right here, we can just see, of course, that these cigarettes are indeed FSC compliant, as is required for every single cigarette currently produced within the United States 2B. And then there's just the barcode under here, all in white and black. Nothing too interesting going on. Uh, moving on to the uh, other side of the packaging, we can just see it just says at the very top, underage, so prohibited, right there in white. And then we can just see the Surgeon General warning right there, which just says uh, cigarette smoke contains carbon monoxide. Uh, that is indeed true. Cigarette smoke does indeed contain carbon monoxide, but... That stuff just gives me the extra spicy buzz, you know what I'm saying? So I certainly do have no complaints on my behalf, that is for sure. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this side of the packaging. Let's go move on to the top of the packaging. It to the top of the packaging, just says 24-7 right there in white. Pretty much just a simplified version of the 24-7 logo right there. And instead of being in green, it's in white though. Then under that, it just has a white line, it just says menthol in white. And then another white line, it just says king box right there in white. Pretty much just exactly what you saw on the front of the packaging, just in a different color and uh, slightly smaller as well. It does bother me that this is like more towards the bottom than the top and that it's like off center. That bothers me so much, I ain't gonna lie y'all. But it is what it is kind of thing. It is what it is. I don't think it's meant, I think like it's meant to be cut at a little bit different, but who knows in all honesty, who knows. This is all on a green background. Nothing too much going interesting going on. Moving on to the bottom, we can see it is literally the exact same look as we saw on the top of the packaging. Nothing different, except for the fact that we can see an Indiana tax stamp on the bottom of this pack of cigarettes because these cigarettes were indeed um, purchased in Indiana, uh, from what I can tell at least. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to uh, the packaging for this pack of cigarettes right here. Uh, as I'm sure you guys can tell, I'm not really a super big fan of it. I like the logo of the 24-7 uh, cigarettes. Uh, and I do think that the packaging kind of has a, an early 2000s kind of uh, charm to it where it's kind of like, oh yeah, ugly, hideous, Windows Vista graphic design packaging kind of thing. It's kind of got that sort of charm to it. But it's not an attractive pack. I don't really like it. And even though I will admit it does kind of have a charm to it, I'm not a fan. I'm not a particularly big fan of it, that is for sure. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the packaging. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get the uh, cellophane all off of this pack of cigarettes right here. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, first off, before I go ahead and if the cellophane wants to come off, wow, cellophane doesn't want to come off. But before I go ahead and get one of the cigarettes all out and everything like that, I do first off just want to take a look at the quality of the packaging. How's the quality of the packaging? Oh wow, that Indiana tax stamp just flaked all over my hands. Yeah, that's, that stuff just disintegrated all over my hand. Wow. Um, so how's the quality of the packaging though? Quality of the packaging is actually pretty good. You know, it's, I mean, like it's about average kind of thing, but it's on the upper average kind of thing. It's definitely not like below average by any means kind of thing. It's just not bad. It's not bad quality by any means kind of thing. Yeah, no, not bad. Not that I was really expecting a particularly bad quality cigarette pack. Um, it's pretty hard to make a bad quality cigarette pack, although I've seen them before. Um, Finding high-quality cigarette packs is a little bit rare. Finding low-quality cigarette packs is a little bit rare. 
95% of them tend to be pretty average, and this is no different, but it's a pretty good kind of thing. There's no, um, there's only like one little bit right here where I can kind of catch my finger on it. The rest of them are very nicely cut and everything like that kind of thing. I really can't complain. I really can't complain. Not too bad at all. The overall texture for this cigarette pack is very much a sort of smooth, um, almost sticky printed paperboard sort of uh, texture, I definitely have to say. Not too bad. Pretty basic for a menthol cigarette from the United States. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this pack of cigarettes all opened up. And let's just take a look at what the inside of the cigarette pack looks like. There's nothing going on on the uh, inside of the cigarette lid right here. And we can just see the insert holding the cigarettes into place. It is a pretty basic, just normal white kind of thing. Nothing too interesting going on. The foil is pretty basic as well. It does not say 24-7 on it or anything like that, even though that would be pretty cool if I do say this myself, but it doesn't. But I get it. It's a menthol cigarette. It's a menthol cigarette. It is a menthol cigarette, but that's not why it doesn't say 24-7 on it. It's a budget cigarette. And so they're trying to be cheap kind of thing. They're trying to be cheap. And so, of course, they're not going to have a custom foil or anything like that kind of thing. It's just saves a saves penny per couple thousand. And that's what matters kind of thing. That's what matters. But let's go ahead and get this uh, just opened up. Let's see what the foil kind of feels like kind of thing. I'd have to say it's a pretty papery as a whole kind of thing. Pretty papery on the inside. Uh, it has a slight sort of like glossy foil texture on the outside, but so more papery in texture than not. Let's go and see how easily this pulls out. Pulls out really easily. Certainly no complaints on my behalf. Let's go and shove that in my backpack. Can't be littering or nothing like that. And let's go ahead and get one of the 24-7 menthol cigarettes all out. And let's go and take a look at what they look like, what they feel like, and what the quality of them is like. So first off, let's just go ahead and take a look at what this cigarette actually looks like. And we can see it is very much a pretty basic budget cigarette. It doesn't even say 24-7 anywhere on the cigarette. We can see there is a cork style filter at the top. There's two gold bands on the cork style filter right there. And then there's just more cork style filter. And then it just goes to normal white paper. I assume that this is probably the standard, um, the standard tube that uh, Excalibur International uses for a lot of their full flavored cigarettes, this one included. Uh, and so that's probably why it doesn't say 24 seven on it. As said, budget cigarettes are all about saving pennies per couple thousand cigarettes made. And that's another, and not having uh, ink on the cigarette uh, to customize it just a little bit more kind of thing is one way to save pennies on every couple thousand made kind of thing. And so as such, uh, well, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't put any ink on it or anything like that kind of thing. It's just the same tube I assume that they use for every other cigarette they produce. But, you know, as said, cork style filter, two lines of gold right there, and then it just goes to normal white paper. Are there any lines of perforation on the filter? I am surprised. I thought totally thought that there was going to be a line of perforation, but looking at it in the light real quick, I am not, ex I'm not, I'm not seeing any. I don't know why I put my sunglasses on. That's not helping me at all. I am not seeing any lines of perforation. No, no. Wow. All right. All right. I'm not seeing any lines of perforation. Wow. That's different than my expectation. Maybe these will be a little bit less airy than I thought. In fact, they're not going to be airy at all because there's no perforation at all. I am impressed. I am pretty, I am pretty impressed, y'all. Uh, the quality of the cigarette as a whole seems pretty good. It's not, it's not bad quality by any means kind of thing. The uh, cork style right here, the cork style filter right here, it's a uh, peeling up just a little bit right there kind of thing. You can definitely tell there's a budget cigarette. It's not the most even cut in the world, but I mean, like, it's not bad by any means. It's pretty hard to make a low quality cigarette, I will admit. Um, the blend of the tobacco seems to be, I'd have to say, a uh, medium blend of tobacco. That is for sure. There's lighter aspects. There's also darker aspects, but it's just more of a medium tobacco as a whole kind of thing. Might look darker on camera, but it is indeed a medium blend of tobacco in real life. And let's just see if I can just really properly show y'all but nah, it's not really coming through super well kind of thing it's not really coming through super well but, you know, it definitely comes off like a, a uh, medium blend maybe more of a dark medium blend if i do say so myself but um what does the cigarette smell like well you can definitely smell the menthol that is for sure you can definitely smell the menthol very 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 light menthol smell kind of thing i'd have to say it's very much a very light menthol sweet yet almost sour spearmint smell kind of thing and that's pretty much what i'm expecting taste wise anyway so i'm not really particularly surprised but, you know that's pretty much what the smell of the cigarette is overall these cigarettes uh, look like they're gonna be okay kind of thing it's seem they seem like a pretty basic budget cigarette off the bat not really expecting too much from them not really expecting 
too little from them either. Just expecting them to be a basic budget cigarette. Not really expecting them to be particularly good. But I'm looking forward to giving them a smoke nonetheless. Not bad quality packaging. Not bad quality cigarette. But it's just a basic budget cigarette kind of thing. Not much going on. Before I go ahead and get the cigarette all lit up though, I do first off want to go ahead and take a little bit of a sip of water, just so my uh, my palate is refreshed before I go ahead and start smoking, because you guys know, I gotta have a palate refresher, you know what I'm saying? Even though I haven't had a cigarette during this video yet. I did have a cigarette right before this video, sitting on the ground next to me, but um, I need to have my palate refresher anyway, you know what I'm saying? Definitely not because my throat's getting dry. Well. I do suppose, without further ado, it is now time for me to go and get my lighter all out of my pocket, and it is now time for me to go ahead and get one of my 24-7 menthol cigarettes all lit up, and it's now time for me to go ahead and let you guys know how these cigarettes actually are. Will they be good? Will they be bad? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that way is to get it all lit up and to go ahead and smoke it. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get this cigarette all lit up. Yes sir, yes sir, you know what I'm saying, I'm saying. Gonna go and grab myself a little screenshot real quick. Well, hopefully that'll do. Right off the bat, these are, of course, most certainly a menthol cigarette, if I do say so myself. I'd have to say the taste is more so than not what I was predicting. Uh, if anything, it's a little bit sweeter than I was kind of expecting it to be. Uh, I'd have to say the taste in specific. Is very much a spearmint, a very mild pretty basic tasting, sweet. No, it's not a mild spearmint by any means kind of thing, but okay. I'm trying to think of the right way to describe it. Okay, so. It's very much a more distinct than not, yet not completely overwhelming, distinct spearmint taste that is mildly sweet, yet at the same time has a mild sourness to it that almost comes off like a light iciness kind of thing. I'd have to say is the right way of describing it. Comes off very mildly sweet and has a very mild sort of sourness to it that almost comes off as icy, but you don't get an icy hit in the back of your throat. So I think it's just a sort of almost icy sourness on your tongue, not quite an actual icy sort of taste to say it precisely. I think that's a pretty good summary of what the taste is like. Pretty basic budget menthol cigarette in all honesty. I'm not tasting any sort of paper taste. I'm not tasting any sort of chemical taste. I'm not tasting any sort of additive taste. Um, so the menthol is definitely doing a good job of covering up just how low quality uh, these cigarettes right here actually are. So certainly no complaints on my behalf about that. And I'd have to say I can't taste really any of the tobacco kind of thing. The menthol is definitely overwhelming enough. I've had some menthol cigarettes where you can taste the distinction in the menthol and the tobacco kind of thing. You can taste the uh, you can taste the tobacco just a little bit, kind of thing. You can tell that the menthol is based on the tobacco, and you can taste that a little bit with this as well, but more so than not, if you're not really looking for it, kind of thing, it's just a distinctly menthol cigarette. Yeah, not really much tobacco taste in there at all. The tiniest bit, you can definitely tell there's a little bit of a tobacco taste in there, but not much at all, kind of thing. Not much at all, if I do say so myself, definitely. More overwhelming than not, menthol taste. What's the body off of this cigarette gonna be like though? Body is pretty big if I do say so myself, pretty big, not super airy kind of thing. Yeah, pretty big body, pretty, pretty decent as a whole kind of thing. Bigger than I thought it was gonna be, that is for sure. Bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Certainly no complaints on my behalf, I ain't gonna lie y'all. Um, definitely, yeah, pretty big body, especially for a menthol cigarette. Menthol cigarettes tend to have smaller bodies as they tend to have lines of perforation. No line of perforation on this cigarette though, so bigger body than I was expecting, so certainly no complaints on my behalf. I'd have to say airflow wise. <sighs> airflow is uh, perfectly fine. Draw wise though, the draw is definitely um, 
pretty uh, pretty tight. I definitely have to say it's definitely a heavier draw than knot that is for sure due to the lack of perforation. There's no sort of airy draw or anything like that kind of thing. It definitely is a heavier than knot uh, draw. Uh, that is for sure, which gives the cigarette some significance in that way. And as I continue smoking the cigarette, I'd have to say I am starting to pick up some sort of low quality tastes. It was distinct at the beginning. I couldn't taste at the beginning when I was going over the taste initially, but now that I'm a little bit through the cigarette, I am picking up some sort of, I'd have to say, low quality paper taste. I'd have to say I'm picking up some low quality paper taste. So yeah, the menthol, is not covering up the entire low quality taste of these cigarettes. I couldn't taste at the beginning. The tar is just building up kind of thing. And so now I'm able to notice it just a little bit more. The filter is definitely doing its job. We can see it's quite yellow if I do say so myself. But you know, you can definitely tell there is no perforation because there's no sort of white area around the middle kind of thing where it's all yellowed and everything like that kind of thing. And from what I remember, at least uh, cigarettes with distinct lines of perforation tend to have a little bit of a whiteness around the yellow kind of thing just because the air tends to go through there kind of thing, which gives you the air, um, airy sort of uh, draw and everything like that kind of thing. But you know, um, yeah, tasting a little bit of a low quality paper taste, eh, it's a little bit of a shame kind of thing. A little bit of a shame, it is what it is. Yeah, not that I wasn't expecting this, but I was hoping I wasn't going to. <sighs> These are not a particularly interesting nor unique menthol cigarette. It's a budget cigarette. It's a budget menthol cigarette. It's not particularly interesting, not particularly unique. I don't really like it all that much in all honesty. It's okay. Menthol cigarettes are not really particularly to my preference. I will admit these are better than the other variety of 24-7s I've tried before, which was the 24-7 Reds. Those I really was not a fan of kind of thing. You could really taste the low quality paper taste and everything like that. It's a little bit covered up with the menthol um, with this cigarette, but you can still taste a little bit kind of thing. It's not an interesting budget cigarette. Um, if you want a cheap menthol, hey, this is a cheap menthol, but it's not particularly interesting. It's pretty basic if I do say so myself. Just a slightly, very mild, um, sweet taste in the menthol with a little bit of sourness in there as well. And maybe the tiniest bit of iciness. Not too much though, if I do say so myself. Not too much. Pretty basic taste as a whole. Not particularly interesting. And um, I'm not a particularly big fan. How rough and how smooth are these cigarettes though? I definitely have to say rougher than I was expecting them to be. These are more like a seven out of 10. These are more on the same roughness um, scale as a typical full flavored cigarette, not a menthol cigarette. Menthol cigarettes tend to be a little bit smoother than um, normal full flavored cigarettes. These on the other hand though are about the same roughness as a normal full flavored cigarette, I just have to say. Um, so if you do want a rough menthol cigarette, I do think you might enjoy these a decent amount, but uh, not super rough by any means. If you want a more rough than not menthol cigarette that isn't like super rough, these might be more to your preference than not, but other than that, nah, it's just a cheap cigarette kind of thing to smoke because it's cheap. Which is exactly what these are designed to be. They're meant to be a cheap cigarette that is, uh, well, just smoked because it's cheap. And these deliver that, these deliver that. I was getting a little bit of an additive taste as I continued smoking the cigarette, but it's gone away just a little bit, or that little bit of a low quality paper taste as I was smoking the cigarette, but it's gone away just a little bit. Let's go and test the body one more time. And then after that, let's go ahead and uh, finish off this cigarette right there. Body, still pretty decent size. I'm gonna go and stub this cigarette out though. I don't really want much more, I will admit, especially since the filter is getting quite warm if I do say so myself and because it's getting, oh, okay. Just had to stand up real quick um, because I just had some tobacco fall into my shorts off of the uh, end of the cigarette. Thankfully, it wasn't hot. That's the second time I've ever had tobacco fall into my shorts. Uh, both times were on video, which is pretty amusing if I do say so myself. Um, thankfully, this time it wasn't hot ash. The last time this happened, it was hot ash, which really was not pleasant. That hurt a lot, I will admit. Um, thankfully, it wasn't hot ash this time, so it didn't hurt. I'm gonna go and put the cigarette filter on the ground and I'm gonna throw it away after this video. But, um, yeah, so that was uh, the 24-7 menthol cigarette. 
Uh, what are my final thoughts on it? I'm gonna sit back down in just a moment, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna chill right here just for a minute. Um, so what are my overall final thoughts on the uh, 24 seven menthol cigarettes? Um, packaging wise, uh, I'm I don't like the packaging. I'm not a fan of the packaging. Not a particularly big fan. It does have a certain charm to it, kind of thing. The whole or, uh, sort of ugly early 2000s look, I think has a charm to it. I will admit, but I think it's designed to look cheap. It looks cheap. I will admit this packaging definitely does look cheap in my personal opinion, but I think it was designed that way, so I do got to give them some credit. But I do think more so than not, it's ugly packaging. And so as such, it's definitely going to be getting a slightly below average rating for packaging, that is for sure. Um, Quality-wise, the packaging is pretty good. Um, the cigarettes themselves don't look particularly interesting. There's no sort of 24-7 logo on the cigarette or anything like that kind of thing. They're not an interesting look as a whole kind of thing. It really is just a basic budget cigarette kind of thing. Just cork style filter, two gold lines, white paper kind of thing. Pretty basic look as a whole kind of thing. It's a cheap cigarette, so it's not unexpected by any means. So that is what it is. Um, Smoking-wise, though, uh, it was okay kind of thing. It was okay. Um, I'll be frank with y'all. I wouldn't buy a pack of these with my own money. No way in hell. I would not. If I was going to buy a menthol cigarette, I'd buy something much more to my preference, and I'd spend just a little bit more money kind of thing. Um, I'd much rather smoke uh, something a little bit a little bit more expensive for the money and uh, get something a little bit higher quality. Um, I'd much rather smoke something a little bit higher quality for the money um, because there are higher quality budget menthol cigarettes out there, in my personal opinion. It's pretty low tier, to me at least, which is not unexpected because Excalibur cigarettes, I've never really had a particularly good experience with them, I will admit. I'm going to go ahead and sit back down, though. But, yeah, the cigarettes themselves, uh, taste-wise, was very much a uh, distinct menthol taste, very overwhelming. You really could not taste almost any of the tobacco taste at all. The menthol taste had a mild sweetness and a mild sourness to it, and a little bit of iciness in there as well. Not too much, if I do say so myself, though. The um, body was pretty good, surprisingly good. Did not expect that. Uh, the airflow was decent. It's perfectly fine, you know what I'm saying? The draw, definitely a little bit tight, definitely a little bit heavy giving the cigarette some significance. And I'd have to say roughness and smoothness wise, these cigarettes were more like a, a seven out of 10, that is for sure. Um, meaning that they're a little bit rougher than not, but not super rough by any means. Overall, yeah, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't buy these cigarettes with my own money. I certainly wouldn't. Am I gonna enjoy smoking the rest of this pack of cigarettes right here? Eh. No, not really in all honesty. I'm not really gonna enjoy smoking the rest of this pack of cigarettes. I'll smoke it. I guess. I don't know. I'm not really looking forward to smoking these in all honesty. They're cheap budget budget, budget cigarettes that are okay at best kind of thing. Um, it's, a, it's a cheap budget cigarette that's meant to be smoked because it's cheap, not because it's good. And I'm like, this isn't terrible. It's not the worst cigarette I've ever had by any means kind of thing. Um, but it's not great kind of thing. And I wouldn't buy the cigarette with my own money. Uh, let me just put it that way. If I was really desperate for a cheap menthol cigarette, I'd get something a little bit different kind of thing. Uh, comparable cigarettes to this one right here, I'm trying to think, I'd have to say, hmm, comparable cigarettes, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think comparable cigarettes. I'd have to say Maverick Greens, a little bit comparable. Uh, Sonoma Menthols, like Maverick Menthols, a little bit comparable. Sonoma Menthols, a little bit comparable. I'd have to say, but Sonoma menthol is a little bit comparable, but a little bit different at the same time. And there's another one I was just thinking about. Seneca menthol is definitely a little bit comparable as well. But for the price, there are better menthol cigarettes out there, such as Kentucky's Best Menthols. I think cost a little bit more than these right here, but in my personal opinion, it's worth it. Um, but those are also not available within the entire United States, and 24-7s are pretty much sold in every single state, if I remember correctly. Excalibur actually has... Uh, a uh, complete list of what brands are available in each state in the United States uh, on their website, I want to say. I took a look at that, and I'm pretty sure 24-7s were available in nearly every single state, which is pretty cool if I do say so myself. Um, yeah, not super impressed by these by any means. It's a budget cigarette. That's um, a budget cigarette. It's meant to be smoked because it's a budget cigarette. I don't like it very much. I wouldn't buy this with my own money, and I'm not really going to enjoy smoking the rest of the pack. So what's the rating I'm thinking for this cigarette right here? I'm thinking, I don't like the packaging. Not really a super big fan of the taste of the cigarette. Got a little bit of a low quality taste in there, a little bit of paper taste in there, but it kind of went away after a little bit kind of thing. So I do got to give it some credit. Um, I'd have to say, I'm trying to be harsher with my ratings. Um, 
so I'd have to say probably, I was tempted to give these a six out of 10, but I said, I'm trying to be harsher with my ratings. I'd have to say like a four out of 10. These are like a solid four out of 10 in my personal opinion. Really not a super big fan, but it's a budget cigarette that is there because it's a budget cigarette kind of thing. It's not meant to be anything super interesting. It's a budget cigarette kind of thing. It's not super high quality. It's not meant to be. It's a budget cigarette. Um, but there are better budget cigarettes out there. And I'm not really a super big fan of these. Nope. Don't really like them all that much in all honesty. Not a super big fan. And so as such, I definitely do think that they deserve the 4 out of 10. Definitely not the worst cigarettes I've ever tried before. Definitely not terrible. I could smoke the rest of the pack if I want to. But I don't really want to in all honesty. I might. I probably will eventually smoke the rest of the pack. Just simply because I just don't have any other cigarettes on deck or something like that kind of thing. But... I don't really want to smoke the rest of the pack. They're okay, at best. But you know, four out of 10 for these cigarettes right here. I certainly hope you guys have enjoyed watching my review of the 24-7 uh, menthol cigarettes. If you guys have enjoyed watching this review, this video, of course, please make sure to well like and subscribe for more content. I have my Instagram, my book, my merch, my PO box, and my second channel all in the description down below. Go check it all out. Yeah, no. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. To the next one, stay safe and peace. Have a great one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying.